Hi everyone, I'm very excited to be here at Emacs Comp 2021 today to give my talk called Meta X Forever, How Emacs Will Outlast Text Editor Trends. So let's start with a conclusion first. I know it's a little bit unorthodox, but let's just uh, try it and see what happens. So no matter what happens in the wider software world, GNU Emacs will continue to be a beloved program with a dedicated community and a healthy team of maintainers and contributors. So you're probably wondering, who am I to be making such a claim? Uh, so I'll tell you. I am David Wilson, the creator of the System Crafters YouTube channel and community. Uh, if you want to see a lot of really great videos about uh, GNU Emacs, GNU Geeks, etc., uh, come check out my YouTube channel. I'm also on Library and Odyssey if you don't want to go use YouTube. And also if you're the type of person who doesn't want to use any of these websites uh, and you want to see my videos anyway, please just send me an email at the uh, email address below and I'll see if I can set you up with that. Uh, you can also check out my website uh, and the places where we chat, especially on Libra chat at the System Crafters channel. So uh, if you have any thoughts after seeing this talk, please feel free to send me an email or find me on chat. So uh, there is a recurring concern in the Emacs community about its popularity. And this is something that keeps coming back time and time again. You probably see it every year or two where people on Reddit or maybe on the Emacs Develop mailing list are talking about ways to increase Emacs popularity. And more recently, there was a discussion on Hacker News where somebody posted a link to this Making Emacs Popular Again uh, blog post, which does chronicle some of the more recent discussions on Emacs Develop about things that can be done to make Emacs a more popular editor. So the title of my talk claims that Emacs is going to outlast text editor trends. So to, out, to elaborate on this claim, we're going to try to answer a few specific questions. First of all, what is popularity and how do you even measure it? So if people are saying that Emacs needs to be more popular, then what do we really mean by popularity? Also, what are the benefits of popularity? So if Emacs did somehow become more popular, what benefits would it receive from that? And uh, also, how does an editor lose popularity and what are the possible consequences to that? And then what are the unique factors about Emacs that will ensure that it survives long term? So what is special about Emacs that will help it to thrive despite whatever happens in the, uh, the popular sphere of uh, text editors and programming languages, etc. So first of all, what does popularity really mean? So when someone says that Emacs needs to become more popular, what are they really saying? Is it that there needs to be more users and that they stick around, like they learn how to use Emacs and they uh, continue to be users? And if we did get those new users, what would it actually do for Emacs? Uh, also, is it that there are more community members that are creating new packages? If you know that sort of assumes that the editor itself doesn't have enough packages or that the only way that the, an editor stays alive is for there to be constant churn with new packages coming around. Uh, is it that there is more content being created by users, like more blog posts being written, more YouTube videos being made, uh, more other ways that people are evangelizing the use of Emacs, Emacs and also teaching people how to use it? Uh, also, is it that uh, more long-term stability is uh, had in the editor and more core improvements that are being made over time? I mean, I guess you could say that it does make sense that if, you're, if the editor is more popular, then people will be more invested in improving it and there will be more new contributors coming in. But is greater and greater popularity really what's needed to ensure that this happens? Also, uh, it could just be that there's more validation for someone's personal choices. Uh, you know, people tend to use these software choices that they, they use as part of their identity. So is it that they want Emacs to be more popular so that they can finally say, I'm an Emacs user and have people think that they're cool or hip or whatever. Uh, hopefully, that, hopefully that's not the case. Hopefully it's one of these other points, but it could be something because as we see, you know, there's a lot of trends in fashion in when it comes to software development and also uh, free software and open source tools. So as we go through this talk, uh, keep these questions in mind as we talk about some of the finer points on all of this and uh, see whether you think that popularity really correlates with these things. So first of all, how do we measure popularity? Uh, what information do we have to actually determine which editors are popular and whether they're gaining or losing popularity? So I've got a few or a couple places here that we can look at to, to judge the popularity of various editors. Uh, first of all, Google Trends. Google actually gives us the ability to track and compare search volume for particular terms and topics over time. So if you wanted to know, you know how often someone was searching about Emacs, maybe to try to find help for something or look for documentation or maybe look for blog posts, etc., uh, you can look at Google Trends to see how often people are searching for Emacs over time. 
And one useful ability is that we can compare how much people are searching uh, across various different topics and see a graph, which is what I'm going to show you right now. This graph shows you the search volume for Emacs compared to Vim, Atom, Sublime Text, and Visual Studio Code from 2004 to the present uh, worldwide. So all across the world where searches are happening. And you can see that in 2004, Emacs is the reigning king supreme where you have the most search terms uh, or searches happening on Emacs at that time. Also, uh, Vim is quite high on this list as well. Uh, let's see, Sublime Text is a bit lower in the list, but it's in like third place. Um, no, nope, yeah, that's right. And then Adam is is quite low, but the thing that Adam didn't exist yet. So maybe at that point, you know, this is probably something else. Google is just, you know, getting random data. And then Visual Studio Code also didn't exist. So probably this is like Visual Studio searches. But then as you go across the years, you see that gradually Emacs popularity appears to be declining. Uh, as does Vim, but not quite so much. And then over time, Sublime Text becomes more popular, and then VS Code in more recent years becomes very popular compared to everything else. So uh, it looks like Emacs has declined significantly in popularity while the other editors have taken over. Uh, but is the search volume really the only important factor that indicates popularity or health of a given editor? That still remains to be seen. So we can also take a look at the uh, the yearly survey that the website Stack Overflow puts out, uh, asking developers about the tools that they use to find out which ones are being used most frequently and that are gaining popularity over time. So there is a great blog post by someone named Robin Clean who uh, synthesizes some of this data together specifically about editors and provides us with a graph that we can take a look at that compares the popularity of particular editors in the last maybe four or five years, or at least 2015 to 2019, uh, based on the responses to the Stack Overflow survey. And in this case, we see that uh, Emacs is the light blue line, and it sort of stays in maybe, uh, let's see, maybe third place in the beginning, and then fifth place, and basically just stays in fifth place the whole time compared to things like Atom, Sublime Text, and VS Code. And as we saw before, the VS Code just sort of ramps up at the end. Now, uh, this is another thing that basically is showing us, similarly to the Google, uh, Google Trends, that Emacs popularity is not quite as much as other editors out there. Uh, you can also look at the 2021 results of the uh, Stack Overflow survey, which I'll show you now, which shows Emacs in 16th place. Uh, let's see, if we look here, we see Visual Studio Code is the, the most popular. Then we have a whole bunch of other, you know, well-known editors. Some are kind of surprising, like Notepad++ is quite high up there. But then we have Emacs here coming right in behind PHP Storm and NetBeans, which is pretty funny to me. But um, it just goes to show you that, you know, the the Emacs community is, you know, smaller than what you might uh, consider for other editors, or at least the Emacs user base, maybe, maybe it's just the people who actually respond to the survey, you can't really tell for sure, because all this data is coming from a self selected group of people who have responded to the survey. So um, I think what basically what I'm trying to say is that if you look at all these things, you would probably get the uh, perception that Emacs is dead, and that maybe nobody really uses the editor anymore, or that it's on its way out. However, I think there's another way to look at the uh, the health or popularity of Emacs or e any other editor, really. And that is to judge the popularity and health by taking a look at the community activity in places such as Reddit or maybe on uh, Discord servers, Slack servers, uh, IRC channels, uh, mailing lists, particularly on Emacs Devel, where all of the conversation about the development of Emacs happens. Uh, blogs, there's quite a lot of people in the Emacs community writing blog posts. Uh, there's quite a few YouTube channels now making uh, content about Emacs pretty frequently. And then conferences like this one, Emacs Conf. Um, so if you've spent any time in any of these places recently, did you actually get the sense that Emacs community lacks activity? I personally don't. I see quite a lot of activity on Reddit. I see a lot of activity in various other places, even my own uh, chats that I've created. Lots of people talking about Emacs every day. But uh, this is kind of harder to measure because you would have to go count all of the ma the mailing list uh, emails compared to other editors, or maybe like the Reddit post compared to other editors. We could do that, but really the more important thing is to just go experience the community by going to one of these places and take a look at what's going on. And you can get a really good sense of that by checking out Sasha Chua's Emacs News uh, roll-up blog posts that uh, come out every week. It's a very good distillation of things that are happening in the Emacs community. So um, if you... 
if, if you look at those things and, and look at all that, you can tell that there is actually something happening in the Emacs community that is more than what you see in the numbers on Google Trends and on Stack Overflow. Uh, another interesting point that doesn't really fit into all this, but if you want to look at the actual data, data from the Emacs community about how the, how the community uses Emacs, check out the results of the 2020 Emacs survey. And I'm sure there's going to be another uh, Emacs survey at some point soon uh, as well. But that will give you some insight into what's happening within the community itself so that you can see that there's quite a lot of activity and a lot of different use cases for Emacs and, and types of people who are using Emacs. So let's talk about how editors lose popularity. So people are worried that Emacs is going to lose popularity. What do they worry is going to happen if that happens? So uh, maybe, or how actually could it happen? So maybe a new editor with better features appears. So one theory for why users left uh, TextMate for Sublime Text. So if you don't know about TextMate, it was a very popular editor on Mac OS. Uh, back probably in the Ruby on Rails craze time frame, maybe like the mid 2000s, 2005 or so. Uh, and then eventually Sublime Text came along and uh, it had a better extensibility API and, and really good performance. And it also was able to use some of the same stuff from TextMate, like the syntax highlighting grammars and the snippet definitions, et cetera. So you had TextMate, which was a well-loved editor, but then a new editor called Sublime Text came along with better functionality and people started switching over to it because it could do more things and the user had more ability to add functionality to it. Uh, also, VS Code uh, came along and used a similar model to the Atom editor, basically being uh, a web-based editor using Electron, but it greatly improved upon performance and IDE tooling ecosystem for, you know, people getting real work done with large projects. You need to have things like IntelliSense and, you know, being able to find definitions of, of functions or classes that are defined. Uh, so you have a new editor that comes along that has basically better functionality than the one that was there before. But the thing is, if you have a new editor that comes along with better functionality, it still has to be at least as good as or better than the previous editor for people to stick with it. So it's a very tall order for some, someone to say that there's going to be some editor, editor that will come along that will be better than Emacs on every dimension because there are some unique dimensions that are hard to beat uh, in an editor like Emacs. Uh, lack of sufficient maintenance. That's the one thing that could possibly happen if an editor loses popularity. So maybe sometimes... Uh, sorry, that's something that, that can cause a lack, uh, loss of uh, popularity. So sometimes it, the development team for an editor either moves on or maybe switches focus to a different project. And when this happens, the development of the editor can stagnate, giving the impression that it's dead. And uh, you can see this happening a lot of times on you know repositories for open source projects, where if someone doesn't make any commits or adding new features for a while, people just automatically assume that the thing is dead, even if it's in a very stable state and doesn't really need any improvements to be made. So this is something that, that can happen over time. Uh, the developers of Sublime Text sometimes give the impression that the editor isn't being maintained because of long breaks between updates. And this gives people the, the if you go search for is Sublime Text dead, you'll see posts about this you know, every couple of years where people are wondering what's happening with Sublime Text. When in reality, there's actually develop, development happening on this project and you know, paid users are getting these updates because they've paid, but the project's not open source. You have no visibility into the development. So if people have the perception that, that the editor is not being maintained, then there's going to be rumors getting started and that could cause sort of the mentality of people to shift and try to like move on to other editors because they perceive them to be more well-maintained or more active. Another problem can be that there are major bugs that persist over a long time that aren't being fixed while the maintainers are focusing on some other efforts in the project. And this could hurt sentiment in the community and cause a backlash leading to an exodus. So if you have really bad bugs and people think that you're not really concerned about fixing them, then that could be something that would cause an editor to lose popularity as people move on to find something else that appears to be more stable. And lastly, sometimes all it takes is that for a new programming language to become popular or for an influential person to say that they switched to a different editor because people are, you know, um, capable of being led by someone else who is influential. So uh, sometimes it just, all it takes is someone to say, you know, I'm not gonna use this editor anymore and uh, other people will follow. But oftentimes it's not just about the fashion changing, it's also there's other problems that are happening. Some of these other things that I mentioned before that could be contributing to this overall sentiment that caused people to move on. So then what happens when an editor loses popularity? So uh, if people are worried that Emacs is going to lose popularity, um, what happens if it doesn't gain more? So 
uh, what are the possible consequences? Well, maybe core maintainers will gradually leave the project with nobody re to replace them. I mean, if you have a project like Emacs where there's uh, a core that's written in a language that's different than the language that everybody uses to extend it, then maybe it's risky to have people leave the project because you don't have other people to come along who can help maintain it and to carry on the knowledge of the core. Also, maybe no new features are being added to stay competitive with other editors. So this is one of these things where people kind of feel like there's a feature mill where you know, if new features are coming online in other editors, maybe your editor needs to catch up. Well, I don't really think that that's necessarily needed, but if there are new paradigms or usage patterns or workflows that are um, becoming, I guess you could say mainstream, sometimes it does make sense for an editor to be, be able to adopt these. But if you have a sufficiently extendable editor, then oftentimes you don't really need to do anything other than just write a new package. Uh, critical bugs that never get fixed. I mean, if, if people start to drift off from the project, then it is much more likely that uh, bad bugs won't get fixed over time. Less community interest in creating and maintaining packages is another possibility. If, if people don't feel like there's, it's worth their time anymore because no, not many people are using an editor, maybe they'll have more users and more interaction if they go write a similar package for a different editor. Uh, less blog posts, uh, videos, content, basically. Like if, if people feel that it's not worth their time to make content about the editor either, or if they're just not interested anymore, then those things will dry up. And also one thing that is possible, but probably not very likely, is that the program may not be packaged anymore in Linux distributions or for other operating systems. So if it's not worth someone to package it or they just sort of lose interest in the editor, then maybe those things sort of drift away and you can't even install it anymore in many places. But I feel that these things would only really happen if there was already other major issues in the in the dev team or in the community, like maybe a high profile schism in the maintainer team, sort of like what we saw with uh, GNU Emacs versus X Emacs, because you have you know two competing versions of the same idea with different implementations, and then over time one of them may fade out because people just lose interest, and in maybe something like GNU Emacs gradually catches up and surpasses it in functionality. So. These things can happen, but uh, it's not really as likely as people would think, I think. So how is Emacs going to survive despite popularity? I feel that there are a few important and unique factors that are going to contribute to this. Uh, first of all, Emacs is more deeply hackable than almost all other editors. And I'm couching that a bit, but really it is basically more extensible than any other editor. I haven't seen one that's more extensible than Emacs so far. And that's because Emacs was designed for this. The whole point of Emacs is that you should be able to go in and customize your workflow and customize the editor to do exactly what you want it to do. It's this whole idea of user freedom. You know, you're, you're not letting the, the editor designer tell you what to do. You're telling the editor what to do at every step of the way. Also, uh, an Emacs user can grow their skills from small configuration tweaks, just basically setting variables and whatnot, to writing their own packages over time, and then eventually to contributing to Emacs itself with the same skill set, because the majority of the functionality of the editor is written with the same language that you use to configure it. So unlike other editors, where you have this, the way that you um, write extensions for the editor that has a specific API, but if you go contribute to the core, the code base is completely different, it's different with Emacs because you have basically the same uh, APIs, the same code and the same everything that you use to write a package versus writing actual code for functionality for the editor. Now, obviously there's a C layer that is different, but I think a lot of the actual packages and functionality in Emacs are at the Emacs Lisp layer. So what this means is, is that uh, Emacs configuration hackers and package authors are prime candidates for eventually becoming contributors to Emacs itself. And you see this play out a lot of times in the Emacs community where someone writes some really good packages and either the parts of those get merged into Emacs or that person maybe makes contributions to Emacs to add new functionality that their, their own packages can use or just to, to improve Emacs as a whole. So there's much more chance that people who are involved in the community of Emacs can actually become contributors to the project itself. I think that's going to be very important for its health. Also, you don't need to add functionality to Emacs core to make the editor itself better. Uh, package authors are on an equal playing field as the built-in functionality for the same reason of what I said before. Everything's written with Emacs Lisp, or I guess a lot of the functionality is written with Emacs Lisp. And since there's a lot of ways to hook into or replace functionality in Emacs, you can do a lot of deep customizations to Emacs itself to make it better in ways that aren't really, the, the core developers don't need to add new things for you to do that. You can just do it if you want to. So 
that gives Emacs more of a platform feel rather than it just being an editor that can't really be uh, changed very much. Also, Emacs has a strong community of highly skilled package authors and the high quality packages that they create make it far better and more uniquely valuable than many other editors, specifically things like org mode, Magit, org Rome, and a lot of other things that we've talked about on the System Crafters channel over time, and the hundreds of other workflow improving packages that have been created over the years. So all these things uh, really make Emacs uh, a unique offering in the space of text editors or development tools, or even just general information management tools or you know desktop environments, if you want to call it that. So the, the people who are involved in making these things make Emacs far better than it could be just by itself. And this thriving ecosystem helps Emacs to continually feel fresh regardless of what's happening in core Emacs development because packages can do so much and because people can come along and propose sort of a new way of doing things and other people can start using it, Emacs itself doesn't have to be beholden to just what the, the core developers do. The community can also play a major role in making Emacs feel fresh and be modernized over time. Just take a look at what Doom Emacs is doing to give Emacs a better face and Space Max as well. Those things are, are very good for making Emacs more palatable to the general public because you have a much better experience out of the box and a lot of things have been polished for the user experience. So Emacs also has a very strong user community. Lots of activity and discussion about Emacs is taking place all the time in various places like we talked about before, mailing lists, IRC, Reddit, et cetera. If you get into Emacs and you go take part in the Emacs community, there's always gonna be somebody around who's gonna to wanna to talk about Emacs with you and uh, answer your questions. So it's a very good thing uh, for the health of the project because there's a lot of people there that are very invested in it every day and want to see it succeed. Also, there's uh, many community members writing articles and making videos about Emacs, many of which are actually moving forward the state of the art about how we use the editor and how we use it. I mean, how many times have you seen a really great blog post that completely blew your mind and showed you a new way to use Emacs or a new way to think about how, do you, how you use Emacs? I see stuff like that all the time, They're like posts by uh, uh, Protesilaus or uh, by Karthik or by many other people who show you a new way to look at things. And then you're like, wow, this, I could do things completely different than I was doing before. This kind of stuff is extremely important for uh, the health of the editor going forward because people are able to uh, inspire others to use the editor. And it's a great thing for evangelism as well. Like if you, if someone happens to stumble across a video or a blog post, they may be really inspired to use Emacs. And uh, lastly, the Emacs maintainers and contributors really care about the users. Uh, there are many core maintainers who have been with the project for 10 plus years, some way longer than that. So it shows you that the people who work on this project really care a lot and they're very invested in making sure that it, it remains healthy for the long term. Uh, they also really care about ensuring that Emacs continues to work well for long time users and some people who have even using, been using it for 30 to 40 years, which is kind of insane if you think about it. Uh, all while gradually and sensibly enabling new scenarios and core improvements that benefit all of us, even the new and the old users. And keeping a piece of software running and relevant for this many years is a huge effort. So I'm very thankful to the maintainers of Emacs and I hope all of you are as well, because this is kind of a, an anomaly in the software field to have a piece of software who that has existed for so long, who has managed to uh, survive despite various different types of platform transitions, operating transitions over the years, and still thrive and be a very useful and very key piece of software for a lot of people. So aren't all these things that we just talked about supposed to come when an editor is popular? We've been talking about what is popularity, what benefits come with popularity. So all the things I just mentioned, shouldn't that be something that would only be for editors that are super popular? Well, I guess the answer is maybe Emacs is actually popular enough. That doesn't necessarily mean that we should not try to, you know, help other people find Emacs, but I think that we should not worry so much about the popularity of Emacs because what we have is great and we should just focus our time on continuing to improve the health of the community that we have and the health of the editor itself and not worry too much about chasing whatever is happening out in the world at any given point. So to conclude, uh, when the next time someone says we should do this thing or this other thing to make Emacs more popular, ask them these questions. Number one, what does popularity mean to you? Number two, how do you measure it? Number three, what do you think Emacs is going to gain from increased popularity? 
So I hope that you found this talk inspiring and maybe a little bit reassuring. Thanks so much for your time and happy hacking. We'll see you.